Hello everyone. Thank you all so much for joining me today. My name is Wayne Piercy and today I want to take some time to talk to you about what you should do if you're a blind music student preparing to go to music school. This information is based on my own experiences attending music school, so I hope you all find this very helpful. Number one, first thing that might be one of the most important things is a good set of ears. You're going to be learning way more music than you ever learned in high school, and you're going to have to learn it a lot faster. Every semester, you're going to be in large ensembles, small ensembles, chamber groups. You're also going to be participating in student-led projects. And if you're a performance major, you're going to have to do your own solo recitals at the end of your program. Some of the music you're going to be able to get in advance, but there's going to be a lot of instances where you're going to have music sprung on you at the last minute. So having those good ears and good memorization skills is essential. Number two, Braille music. Even if you don't use Braille music every day, it's still important to have a good working knowledge of Braille music because it can really help you understand music notation better and it can help you communicate with your sighted colleagues about what they're seeing on the page. It will also help you get through your music theory and ear training classes. I do want to add to this a little bit though because if you are going to use Braille music as your primary method of learning, I want to strongly encourage you to make sure that you send your music or get the disability services office at your school to send music to the Braille music transcriber well in advance. This will ensure that you're not preparing for auditions and concerts and things like that at the last minute. Number three, music technology skills. We don't have the luxury of sitting in a music theory class with a piece of five line staff paper writing down assignments or writing down ear training dictation or things like that. So being able to use a program like Sibelius for music notation is extremely helpful. If you're looking for a place to learn these types of skills before you go to college, I strongly recommend the five week summer program at the Berkeley College of Music. This program not only teaches Braille music, but also teaches music notation software such as Sibelius, but it also teaches Pro Tools and other programs for recording, editing, and mixing your own music. Number four, good self-advocacy skills. All right, guys, this is one of the most important things, and actually self-advocacy skills will determine whether or not you're going to make it through music school or not. Most music faculty have never worked with a blind student before, so this is going to be a very new situation for them. My recommendation is that on your first day of class, you go up to the teacher and introduce yourself, tell them that you're excited to be in their class, get to know them a little bit, chat them up as much as you can, ask them if it's okay to attend their office hours every week, um, you can also ask them if it's okay to record their classes. Most teachers will be okay with that. Some teachers may not. Some teachers may record their own classes anyway, so that might not be an issue. Going to a teacher's office hour every week will ensure that you are able to better understand things that teachers put on the board or explained in a very visual way in class. It's also a good idea to ask your teacher to play things on the piano during class. Also, another advantage of going to your teacher's office hours every week is that you guys have a good line of communication in place for when you have to take exams. If for whatever reason the school is not able to provide your exam in an accessible format for some reason, you can take the exam orally with your music theory or ear training teacher. This has worked well with a lot of blind music students that I've mentored in the past. There are some situations that will arise though where the teacher just doesn't get it 
either they don't get the blindness thing or they have just made it up in their mind that they don't want to take the extra steps to accommodate you in this situation. If you do find yourself in this situation, it's really, really important to get the Disability Services Office involved because they can help mediate in a situation like this. Failure to establish a good line of communication with your instructors will result in you falling behind in your class, as well as the possibility of you having to withdraw from the class and take it with another teacher a different semester. I've had to do this a couple of times, and believe me, it's not a fun experience. If this does happen to you, though, don't feel guilty. Don't feel ashamed. Just do what you can to ensure that it doesn't happen. If it does, just pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and know that you did everything that you could to ensure that you had control over the situation. Sometimes, no matter how hard we try to educate those around us about things that we need, sometimes it just doesn't work out. So don't beat yourself up about that. Number five. Good orientation and mobility skills. This is also another important one, guys. It's important for all of us to show up to our rehearsals and, and our classes in a timely manner. I know that I've run late for things. I'm certainly not perfect, but it is very important. You don't want people to expect less of you simply because of the fact that you are blind or visually impaired. If your orientation and mobility skills aren't that great, and you're already signed up to go to music school, reach out to your local state commission for the blind. You can obtain orientation and mobility skills through some of their field instructors. Another option is to attend a blindness rehabilitation training center before you go to school. That's another way of getting really good skills. If you're an international student, depending on the country you're coming from, you may have not had the opportunity to get those kinds of skills before attending music school. That's okay, but you should talk about this situation to your disability services coordinator at your music school so that they can help coordinate orientation and mobility instruction with you. It's important to be independent and self-reliant in music school because everybody has a busy schedule. It's okay to ask for help, but you need to get to a point where you can get everywhere you need to go on a college campus quickly and efficiently. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please drop a like, ask any questions you would like in the comments. I'm gonna be posting more videos like this. I'm having a really good time doing it. Stay tuned for more. Please like and subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you all so much. Have a great day.